Next up, uh, we have Sterling Clinton Spellman uh, of Polished by Sterling, and she'll uh, share some exercises and thoughts on getting polished, some tools and resources to uncover the leader in you. Uh, really happy that she's here taking the time to join us this morning. So with that, Sterling, I will pass it over to you. Thank you. Awesome. Good morning. Okay. I can share. So first, let me say thank you. Thank you so much to Venture Cafe and District Hall for allowing me to come and share with you all today. Um, I want you to think about professional development meets personal development. A lot of people focus just on their professional development and they don't realize how much personal development is super important to your growth, your overall growth. So welcome to Polish Uncovering the Leader Within. Um, we're gonna be interactive today. And um, I would like for you to write in the chat if you have questions, whatever it is, please go ahead and do so. There we go. So first, I want you to give yourself a pat on the back. Congratulations for investing in yourself. This is super important. Do it for yourself. This is how you're going to see the results that you want. So congratulations, you're here. You could be doing something boring at work, <laughs> just joking. <laughs> or you could be, you know, watching Maury Povich. That's my, my um, um, trash TV when I want to do something mindless. Watching Maury Povich, but you're not. You're here investing in yourself, so congratulations. So before we get started, if you have a notebook and your favorite pen, I would like for you to take notes and capture the gems that I drop. And why I want you to capture the gems that I drop because we know there's a connection between the brain and when you write that those things really stick. So I want you to do that, write down something that you heard me say that really resonated with you so you can go back to it later and also so it can be stuck in your brain, all right? Also engage and interact. This is part of the social world now. And I know on Zoom, you can put interactions, you can uh, um, you can put a smiley face, you can put a thumbs up in the comments, you can say, hey girl, yes, I feel you. Whatever it is, go ahead and do that. Because I wanna know that you all are feeling me and understanding what I'm saying, or even have a question about what I'm saying. So let's engage and um, interact. And you can connect with me. Um, there's my website, polishedbystone.com. On um, most social media, is Sterling Speaks on my full name. I will be giving you that also at the end, but just in case you wanted to check it out now. All righty. So who is Sterling? Why, why am I here talking to you today? And why um, am I speaking about the leader within? Because I didn't always feel like a leader, even though many of my teachers when I was young, they used to tell me, you are the leader of the class. You are, you know, doing things. I didn't always feel like the leader. But... Over time, doing the work, investing in myself, I have become a leader and I have done a lot of amazing things. And I wanna share a little bit with that of that with you because sometimes you're like, who is this person? Why are they even qualified to talk to me? So here's a little bit of who I am. I'm a speaker, I'm a three-time best-selling author and I'm gonna be sharing with you all one of my books today. Um, I'm a coaching consultant at Polished by Sterling. We are a personal development company. We have trainings, workshops, uh, conferences. I'm also founder of the nonprofit Polished Gems, where we empower, enhance, and transform the holistic well being of women and girls of color. I'm a crunchy mama. And if you all know what crunchy is, I love to do everything natural. So my people call me crunchy. But um, I, I, I'm a crunchy mama to a five year old and a nine month old and they're both geniuses. And that's a, that's a lie for another day, but they really are. Um, uh, I've organized 18 conferences and hired over 200 plus speakers. So I love doing that thing. I love to get people together to really um, share information with them that can really propel them to greater heights. I quit my job in 2016 to impact 1 million visionaries. That's my lifetime goal to impact 1 million visionaries to refine their mindset, lead like a boss and live profitable lives in all areas of their life. Okay, and you'll hear more about that. Um, I'm the creator of the Polish Online Academy. 
um, where we have Speak to Market fame and the collab. I'm a co-owner of the incredible food truck with my husband. So if you're down right across the, the bridge at the Flea on Sundays, my husband's there with the food truck. Um, we travel all over the state to serve delicious food. I also recently um, was the program coordinator. Can you all see this? I'm sorry, this seems like it's in the way. Okay, perfect. Um, I hosted a conference called Polish Con for Women of Color. It's the ultimate personal development experience. I did that three years in a row. Last year, we were actually in Mexico. Um, we did it in Mexico, and I was super excited about that. We had an awesome time. And recently, I was the class speaker for Leadership Rhode Island, class of 2019. And this year, I'm actually the program coordinator for the class 2020. So that's me in a nutshell. So what and who is a leader? So this is the definition, the textbook definition of a leader, a person who leads or commands a group, organization, or country. And it's so funny thinking about the times we're in. This was the actual definition in the dictionary that said the leader of the protest group, right? So you could be a leader of a protest group. You could be the leader of your home. You could be a leader at church. Or you can, it could be a person, organization, or company that is the most advanced or successful in a particular area, a leader in the use of video conferencing. So a lot of times when we think about a leader, we might just think about people like this, right? We think about Oprah. We think about the president of the United States, Donald Trump. We think about Gina Raimondo, our um, governor of our state. Or we think about people like Jay-Z, who's a, a, a multi-billionaire and all these things, right? We think of these people who else do you think of when you think about a leader? Do you think about yourself as a leader? Right? Many people don't. And we're going to get there. So I want you to know, do you know you have what it takes to be a leader? Now, I want you to check yourself. Because some people right now are like, no, I'm, I'm an introvert. I, I, I like to, to be the behind the scenes person. I don't really like to show up in the front or take the initiative. But I want you to know each and every one of us have a leader inside of us. And you just have to uncover it. So uncovering the leader within you starts with your mindset. Your mindset is the established set of attitudes held by someone. It frames your self-concept, so how you feel about yourself, okay? And I want to share with you all a little exercise that I do with a lot of my clients. And you all know my name is Sterling. That is my real name, like Sterling Silver. When I was young, I used to tell people, um, Sterling likes silver, Clinton like the president, right? <laughs> And now I have Spellman, and I say Spellman like the college, but silver, sterling silver, right? So I love silver. And so remember in this last slide, I said that each of us has the leader within us. I want you to look at this silver chalice right here. Do you all know these are the, this is part of the same set, right? Who can tell me what they think the difference is? And let me see if I can go to the chat. Uh, oh, here we go. Let's see. One has been polished. One has been polished, yes. And Tooney said, yes, amen, self-awareness is key. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so one of these have been polished. And why is that important? Did this actual piece of silver ever change? It never changed, right? Except that we just, this one got tarnished and this one is polished, right? And so when we think about silver, because of the environment sometimes, because of what happens to it, it ends up becoming tarnished. And that's how it is with us sometimes, sometimes because of our environment, sometimes because of what we put into our systems, into our mind, into our bodies, it causes us to feel tarnished, especially our mindset. Someone said something to us that just threw us off, right? It could be a boss, 
maybe our boss said, um, you didn't do that right. Or in school, the teacher said, you're never going to be a great writer. You're never going to do, you start to believe those things and you become tarnished. But here's the beautiful thing. Those things, even though on the surface, they can appear to be disruptive to you. All you need is a little bit of polishing to uncover the greatness within you because on the underneath is always you it's always the leader the greatness in you right but sometimes you just need a little bit of polishing so let's let's get to that oops all right so we talked about mindset did you know that most people 80% of their thoughts are negative and insignificant. 80% of their thoughts are negative or insignificant. And what do I mean by insignificant? It means it really has, it shouldn't have any bearing on what you do or who you are. So what are some of the thoughts that people say? I can't do it. It's a waste of time. It won't work. I'm too thin. I'm too fat. It's not for me. It doesn't work. I'm embarrassed. It's too hard. Many times, and I know many of, many of you can identify when you want to start something new, when you want to um, apply for a role, or you want to maybe start your own business. So many negative things go through your mind about why you can't do it. And a lot of times those things are not true. So who can relate? Let's see in the chat. If anybody can relate with a time that they had some negative thoughts. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Amy said she was going to say tarnished, so she guess she's a pessimist. <laughs> yes, right? So many of us can relate to having feelings of feeling unimportant, unwanted, despicable, and it, it, it's 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 very real. My job el elimination in December shook my confidence. Judy, I, let me tell you, I identify with you wholeheartedly because the scary thing is sometimes we get so caught up in who we are in a space that when that's taken away from us, it totally shakes our entire core. And that definitely happened to me before. I was like, who are they to fire me? And then that was, that was my first response, right? But then afterwards, oh my goodness, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. That's going to follow me. People are going to think all these negative things about me because I got fired, right? So yes, absolutely. I know most of us can relate. Who wants to change that, right? We're going to change that. I'm going to give you a, some things to change that. Doubt is a hard attitude to lose. It is. It definitely is. Turn around and say, it's, it says leave the room for opportunity less. Yes, yes, Elizabeth, yes. So I'm going to give you all a couple of steps to help undo that doubt. So in order for you to uncover the leader within, you need a polished mindset. And a polished mindset reflects the refinement of your attitude towards the things you want and need to improve in your life. I have to move this little box here. It's driving me crazy, sorry. It is a mindset focused on significant thoughts, right? So when we're thinking about an insignificant thought versus a significant thought, an insignificant thought really, like I said earlier, really doesn't, is it true? It really has no bearing on you, but you believe those things, right? I'm not worthy. That's not true. Significant thought would be, I have all these amazing things that I've done in my life, and that's what makes me worthy, right? That's what makes me capable of doing this because I have this skill set, all the things that you've done, right? So let's go. So one of the things that I um, do at Polish by Sterling, I create products and services to help people in the personal development space. And so I wrote this book called Cut the Shit, and I hope it's okay to swear, but it's okay. 
We're all adults here. I'm sorry if you all have virtual schooling going on in the background. <laughs> um, so I wrote this book called Cut the Shit, where I collected 33 tried and true ways to polish your mindset and to stop having insignificant thoughts to uncover the leader within. And if you're curious, SHIT stands for stop having insignificant thoughts because those are the shitty things that happen in our mind, right? So I wanna read this quote. On our way to success in every area in our life, the first thing we have to do is to change our mindset in that area. Like the great Les Brown says, there's nothing as powerful as a changed mind. You can change your hair, your clothing, your zip code, your spouse, even your spouse. But if you do not change your mindset, you will perpetuate the same experience over and over again. Everything outwardly changed, but nothing inwardly changed. How many people know those people in our life? I'm not saying it's you, but you'll say, you know what? I'm so sick of this situation. I'm moving to another state. Rhode Island is the issue, right? Or I'm so sick of this job. Maybe myself so sick of this job, which rightfully so, the job might be sucky. But you go to another job and the same thing is happening. Why? Because you change things outwardly and not within. You haven't uncovered who you truly are. You haven't worked on who you really are, right? So nothing's going to change. Even you see, I just told people, you, if you see some pictures of me online, I look like a different person because my hair is 24 inches long or I cut off 24 inches. But even me cutting off my hair, yes, I feel lighter and I feel different. But if I don't work on my mindset, nothing is going to change, right? So just, just to get us there. So today I'm going to share with you six ways to polish your mindset. Six ways to polish your mindset. The first way, I want you to keep a wins or success journal. For some people, they call it their wins. Some people call it their success journal. Some people say all of their achievements. But I want you to keep a wins or success journal. Take a moment to acknowledge your success. And this is super important because on those days when you don't feel like you're a leader, you don't feel like you're capable of showing up, I want you to open up that success journal. And since maybe many of you don't have one, I want you to create one and start writing down all those amazing things you have done. Maybe you, you uh, um, got a degree when it was super hard for you to do. Maybe you did a, a 5K, 10K marathon, and that was something you thought you weren't going to be able to do. Maybe you successfully, like for, for me, and this is something that really makes me feel powerful, like superwoman, I, am able to breast, I was able to breastfeed both my kids and currently still do that. That's huge because on those days when I feel like, oh, I can't do it. I'm like, wait a minute. I breastfed some babies. I can do it, right? Maybe you learned a new skill like cooking and you weren't a person who could cook before. Maybe you recently lost weight. Maybe you wrote that book that you wanted to write. Maybe you applied for that job and not only did you get it, you, you, you negotiated and you got the money you wanted, right? Let me check the chat really quick. Even if I did literally nothing else that day in the early days, feeding was enough. Yes, yes, yes. Lily, if you did nothing, if, if, if I turn the camera around and you see all the laundry of me, <laughs> at least I, I fed my baby, right? So true. Absolutely. So write down the things because one day you're going to need to be reminded that you are great, that you are that leader. So write it down. Let's go. Think kind things about yourself. So now this seems like, oh, of course, think kind things about yourself. But like I told you, most of these tips are from the book. I'm gonna read why you need to think kind things about yourself, okay? Thinking kind things about myself is one of my favorite things to do. But it took a lot of practice at first. 
In fact, I know that many people struggle to think kind thoughts about themselves. They are not conditioned to think positively because doing so is labeled as arrogant. How many times have you been told you're arrogant? If you're a person who compliments yourself, people think, oh, you're arrogant, you're conceited, right? As a, re a result, you may ignore amazing things about yourself and focus on the not so flattering things that lead to unkind and straight jacked up thoughts about yourself. I had to learn to fall in love with myself and that was impossible without thinking kindly and lovingly about myself. I started to list all the things I loved about myself beginning with my smile, the gap in my teeth, my hips, my loving heart, my warm and infectious spirit. I wrote them on sticky notes and put them around my house and my work desk so I can focus on those amazing things about me and it worked. All right. So you could get some sticky notes, write all the things you love about yourself because the average person, when, when they're asked what they like about themselves, they could give you one to two answers. But if you ask them what they don't like, they could give you an encyclopedia of all the things that's wrong with them. So it's super important that if you're gonna start uncovering the leader within, you start thinking kind things about yourself and you start writing things down about yourself that you love. Even if it feels so um, minuscule, like it's the littlest thing. Like I love the gap in my teeth. I remember when I was younger, people used to make fun of me for that, but this is my family signature. Literally all my brothers and sisters have a gap in their teeth and, and it's from my dad. So I love that because that's like my family trait. Anywhere I go, they know I'm a Clinton, right? So start talking good things about yourself. So Amy said, I started a one to two line a day journal in April. Most days I just track what workout I did or where I was that day, but I started tracking interactions with kids and it's a big and big work pieces as well. That is so so amazing and i admire you for that especially the piece about um interactions with your kids my mother-in-law has journals upon journals of interactions with my husband when he was a kid and his brother and it's the most amazing thing you're going to look back on that and say wow i actually was a great mom i actually did great things with my kids and and look back and just have those amazing memories those things are so super important. So think kind things about yourself. All right, so this one is a little harsh, but it's very real. You have to evict that B in your head, okay? Because sometimes she causes you to do some real nasty things or say some really nasty things about yourself. And if you were to wear them on your, on your skin or on your sleeve like this, like this young lady in this picture, you would be embarrassed. You wouldn't even say the things you say to yourself to someone else. That's why we gotta get this witch out our head because it's very detrimental to our progress. Okay, I remember when I wanted to quit my job. <laughs> Good Lord, the thoughts that I said about myself, the things that I would never like my sister and I were quitting at the same time. And so I remember saying all these amazing things are you can do it. You got this. But when it came to myself, I had to constantly check myself because it was always something negative. It's something harsh that I would say to myself. So let's check out this right here. Sometimes you can be your own worst critic during your growth process. You are the person who has assaulted your character worse than any other person hater, naysayer in the world. The things you say to yourself, if another person said it to you, you would be in a fist fight. Just imagine if someone said the things that you said to yourself to you, you would have a major problem. I call that the bitch or the mean girl in your head because she constantly reminds you of all your failures, all your forget forgotten promises, all your missed attempts, and the list goes on. Imagine walking around with someone next to you and every time you try to do something, 
she reminds you that you tried that before, but it didn't work. Every time you are happy, she says, nope, girl, you got to worry about those bills. You got to worry about all those things that are coming down the pipeline. You better worry about this. You better worry about that. Oh, yes. Shannon says her, her inner bee has been very loud during COVID. Tell me about it. Yes. Well, guess what? Tell that negativity by Felicia. Sit down and be gone. You no longer have space here left in my head. Be gone. So Shannon, make sure you tell that inner bee there's no longer space left in your head for her. She must go. She must go. And the minute it comes up, because you don't want to be associated with yourself, right? The minute that inner bee comes up, you're going to look crazy like you're talking to yourself. Say, listen, be gone. I'm not talking to you today. <laughs> okay? I am not talking to you today. Be gone. Level up your relationships and expand your thinking. This is so super important. And I have this, usually it would be, you know, go and meet in person. I'm happy the dis district hall is open now. You can go and meet some people in person, right? But we know in some spaces or some people for whatever reason, whether they're immune compromised or you just can't, there's so many ways for you to connect with other people. And what, 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 what is the expression? I think they say um, birds of a feather flock together. There's another one that says, if you want to know who your friends are, if you want to know a person, check out who their friends are. So if you want to be a leader, if you want that le leadership qualities to come out of you, you need to hang around what? Other leaders, other people who are showing up for themselves, other people who are doing the things that you want to do. Level up your relationship and expand your thinking. I know when I was in my process initially, I used to attend conferences all the time because I wanted to be around other people who were growing and who were thinking along the same lines that I was about what I wanted for my future. At work, if some of you are at work, I know um, when I was working at the lunch table was often so negative. Everything was about why they hated work. Everything was about why they hate life. And I stopped eating at the lunch table. I would, at lunch, I would put on a podcast, I would put on uh, um, YouTube and listen to an audiobook or, or listen to something that was developing me. And then I started to attract people at my job who were thinking about positive things, who were talking about good things. And then that's who I started to sit with. That's who I started, oh, you wanna go out for a drink? Let's talk about some great things. You wanna do that. You wanna put yourself around other people who are, growing who are aligned with where you want to go all right form and nurture relationships with people who are aligned with your goals find people who are on the same path as you they have tons of supportive facebook groups listen they have a facebook group for everything i don't know if you ever heard about the octopus facebook group it has something like almost 60,000 people in there, it might be more, for people who like octopus and wanna be in marine biology and things like that. They have a Facebook group for every single thing. And if they don't have the one that you're, that the group or the, the, the topic that you want, you can create your own. Literally, they have Facebook groups. They even LinkedIn these days have um, groups that you can join. Um, Venture Cafe, District Hall have online workshops and different things where you can connect with other people like this. So be intentional about who you put around yourself and who can support you and help to stretch you. That is going to help bring out the leadership qualities that you already have that you probably were if you were if you're with your same friends, they might make fun of you for or might not even recognize it. So you want to be around people that are going to bring out the greatness in you. Here you go. Exercise that confidence muscle. Confidence is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. A lot of times why people are afraid to show up as a leader is because they lack confidence. They, they have some old, you know, um, 
I would say, I don't want to call it wounds, but old things that people have said to them that have diminished their confidence. Or you got fired from a job before and that has really brought down your confidence. You have been told sometimes from your parents that you weren't good enough. Who, who are you to think that people are going to listen to you? Those were some of the thoughts when I was writing my book. I, I was like, who's going to tell me? Who's going to read my book? They're going to say, who was Sterling? Why should we listen to her? So I had to just do it. And the best way to develop your confidence muscle is to just do those things that scare the shit out of you. Do those things that make you nervous. Do those things that require you put in some extra work because that's the only way you're going to build that muscle. You have to just do it. Be like Nike and just do it. Okay. And y'all can tell I used to be a teacher, right? Okay. <laughs> so now invest in your personal development. This is the most important thing you can ever, ever do for yourself invest in your personal development. Why? Because it will help you to have a rock solid belief in yourself, in your magic, in your gifts and in your talents. You have to read those books that pour into you. You have to listen to those podcasts that give you tips and tools every single day. You have to sometimes hire a coach. I had to hire a coach to help me see who I really was. And that sounds funny. People, people think, well, why, why would I hire a coach for that? They might hire a coach to help them build a business, right? They might hire a coach to help them learn this new skill, but personal development is the skill. And it's the best, it's the best skill you can ever invest in. Why? Because wherever you go, there you are. I want you to remember that this is one of the gems that I say that you should be writing down. Remember, wherever you go, there you are. So no matter what you do, yourself is always going to be there, right? So that means your greatest investment is within yourself to show up for yourself. Amy says podcasts are so key, especially when working from home alone. Yes. I love podcasts. I listen to them in the car. I listen to them when I'm cleaning up in the house. Um, YouTube is so amazing. Like we don't even have cable. The University of YouTube is amazing. <laughs> they have so many awesome uh, um, videos and you can literally search. Here's the thing. Some people might be like, well, where do I start? What books are good? What, what uh, 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 podcasts are good? Think about some keywords. Yes, I love Brene Brown. Yes, I love her. Um, think about some keywords of things that you want to know or get better at. Okay. So maybe one is confidence. You can look up podcasts about confidence. You can look, look up books about confidence. Maybe you say you want to learn how to be a better speaker, or maybe you're, you're dealing with, um, you have some wounds that you need to heal. I know. And, uh, and I'm speaking about this because, um, our friend mentioned this. And I know how hard it was for me to get over it, um, but being being fired and I felt so unworthy, so just like my confidence was shot. And so I had to listen to podcasts to help me build that back up. I had to write down great things about myself. I had to journal. I had to uh, um, really have a, a coach help me walk through while I was why I was feeling this way. Those things are super important to your growth. And when you think about it, some people are like, I want to be CEO of a company one day. I want to um, start my own business or I want to move up the ladder at my job. The greatest thing you can do for yourself is to invest in yourself. Wake up an hour earlier. And I know this one is hard because I have small babies that don't like to sleep. But maybe you're going to bed an hour later or you're waking up an hour uh, uh, um, earlier. Maybe it's not an hour at first, maybe it's 15 minutes. But self-care is part of self-development, personal development, pouring into yourself because so many of us serve 
from a bone dry cup. So many of us are giving and giving and giving. Ivy and I were just talking about this earlier. Before I got on this call, I had to make sure that my mom got to a doctor's appointment via Lyft because I couldn't take her today. And all day you're doing this and that for others, but when it comes to yourself, your cup is empty, it is bone dry, and you're suffocating. You're thirsty, you got nothing left. So find some time to pour into yourself so you can serve from your overflow. And that's something I learned from Lisa Nichols from The Secret. She said, you should never serve from your cup. You should always serve from your overflow. You have so much that you poured into yourself that now, come on, I can help you out. I can do that for you. Because who knows when you serve from your bone dry cup, when you, when you are serving from your very last, it doesn't feel good. That thing that you love doing for people no longer feels good because you, you're tired, you're exhausted. Without our health, which is physical and mental, we are no good to anyone. Yes, yes. Personal development includes your, your, your mental health. Maybe you might need to hire a therapist. That's very real for some people. You might need a, need a therapist. You might need to go to therapy. You might need to uh, uh, um, hire a personal trainer because you're so, you're, you're so physically unfit, it's, it's messing with your mental, right? It's so many things that we can do to better ourselves. And it starts one by one, okay? And don't look at it like you have to eat the whole elephant. Be piece by piece, bit by bit. Start with 15 minutes a day. Meditation is a part of personal development. That's part of your spiritual, right? Meditate. Take five minutes. They have apps for that. They have on YouTube. There's one I listen to um, right before I go to bed. And if you follow me on social media, I can share some of those recess resources with you as well. All righty. So now bonus tip. Practice gratitude daily. This one is super important. And why it's important is because when you focus on the good and being grateful, it's really hard to see the bad. You will find the lessons and blessings in everything that looked like it was a mistake. You will find the lessons and blessings in everything that looked like it was a mistake. So practice gratitude daily. Have a journal. You know, at... Um, at Walmart or at, uh, what's the name of the store? Dollar Tree, Dollar, they have all these little notebooks. Just write it down, have it by your bedside. When you wake up in the morning, write down five things you're grateful for. When you go to bed at night, write five things you're grateful for that happened that day. If you're not a writer, even though remember the connection between pen and paper is very important, but let's say you want to start by just I'm going to say it out loud in my bed. My husband and I, even though we write it down, we do this with each other every night. And we even do this with our baby girl, Hasana. She does her gratitude daily and her affirmations daily. So she does her, I love myself. I love my hair. I love my mind. I love my body. I love my spirit. I am awesome. I am great. I'm amazing. And then she says, today I'm grateful for that my sister didn't pull my hair. <laughs> she said that one. Um, yesterday, I'm grateful my sister didn't pull my hair. You see, she found the, the, the lesson and the blessing, right? Also, um, you can just walk around the house, look in the mirror and say, I'm so grateful that today I woke up. I'm so grateful that today I don't have pain in my back. I'm so grateful today that I was able to do this workshop and this webinar and share this with other people who can now share it with other people. There's so many things, even on the worst day, practice gratitude, and I promise it will help you to feel better. And you know, a secret, I read that leaders, the top leaders in the world, they keep gratitude journals. So yes, yes, yes. So grateful for your energy that you are sharing this with you. Oh, thank you so much. I am so grateful to be sharing this with you. Thank you. So now, quick recap, six ways to polish your mindset. Keep a wins and success journal. That could actually be the same journal. Just, you know, turn it on, um, do front to back, right? One, to keep all your successes and, and, and your uh, um, wins. The other side, you can do your gratitude, right? Think kind things about yourself. 
I love my beautiful mind that I get to create amazing books and workshops and scenarios that help people to see the greatness within them, right? Think about what yours is. Think about all these great things that you are capable of. Evict the bee in your head. Tell her, not today. I'm not talking to you. You're going to look crazy, but you, I, listen, I'm not talking to you. I can do this, right? All right. Level up your relationships to expand your thinking, okay? Connect with people on social media. Go to district hall. Go to this other networking events. Find people at your job. Maybe it's a, it's a relative. For me, my sister and my um, niece, we always make it our business to find a new person to connect with every week. And we check on each other. Did you connect with a new person today? Did you connect with a new person this week? All right, level up those relationships. Exercise your confidence muscle. And the best way to exercise your confidence muscle is to do what? Just do it. Just do it. Do that thing that has you shaking in your boots. Do that thing that seems a little difficult because I promise you it's only going to get easier and you're going to be showing up loud and proud. And it's okay to be loud and proud. Yes. I know they told you in school don't do that, but they lied. You got to show up for yourself. You have to show up for yourself because if you don't speak up for yourself, who's going to speak up for you? Nobody. Speak up for yourself, right? Invest in your personal development is the best thing you can do. Read a book, hire, hire a coach. Listen to the podcast, listen to the YouTube, meditate. Put yourself first so you can be there for others, all right? So what's next? I do have this book that you can purchase, and I will put it in the chat, www.cuttheshitbook.com. And I will sign a copy and send it to you. And if you are local, I might have to drop it off because the, the postal service has been insane. But that's a whole nother story for another day and another life. <laughs> but yes, I will sign a copy and get it to you. Um, read the book. Oh, yes. Let's do a book. We can do a book signing at District Hall. Let's do it. Absolutely. Um, make sure you read the book. How many people attend workshops, conferences? They get all this amazing information but they don't use it. So actually read the book and then implement the steps. I have 33 ways in here. And not only do I have 33 ways for you to polish your mindset, I have reflection questions and affirmations that you can write down and put around your house for you to affirm. So I want you to know, invest in yourself, get the book, read it and then implement it. It's super important. Don't leave out that part. And this is for anything that you do in terms of your learning. What you learn, do your best to implement right away because that's how it's going to stick. That's how you're going to get the best use of it. I know I used to be one of those people go to the conference. I'm super pumped. Woo! I learned this new information and then it's in the notebook and it's somewhere and I never implemented it, right? Okay, so yes. Please, please make sure you do that. Still a great energy with the positive message. Thank you so much for starting my Tuesday on a great note. Can't wait to implement these strategies. Yes, thank you, Allison. Wonderful positive message. I'm so happy that you all enjoyed this. This is literally what I love to do. I love to pour into others. I love to help people uncover the greatness within. They call, I, I forgot to, I can't believe I forgot to mention this to you all. They call me the polish of why? Because... I'm here to uncover the greatness within you. That's the name my clients gave me, The Polisher. So if you see on my social media, Sterling Clinton Spellman, The Polisher, is because that's what I love to do. I feel like it's my life's purpose to show up loud and proud and big to help people uncover their greatness so they can be loud, proud, beautiful, and just live into their fullest potential. So thank you so much. Here's the next page where you can connect with me. That's the book right there. And then you can connect with me on Facebook, Sterling Clinton Spellman, Instagram, Sterling Speaks, on um, LinkedIn, Sterling Clinton Spellman. There's my website and my email. And this is, this is my, this is me. I love to dance when my clients meet their goals. I literally do a dance for them. I love to see people shine. That is, I'm like real life cheerleader. 
and that's me there dancing so you get a little bit of taste of me <laughs> listen it's it's so important it's the best thing i've ever done for myself to really just um sit back and say what can i do to be better sometimes we, we're in the run and the grind to just professionally be great we're just trying to do that but we don't realize that it really starts here it starts here and that is gonna just shine in every area of your life so whether it's with your 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 spouse with your kids with um with your your other extended family members at work it really does help to do that hi elizabeth hi renee thank you for showing your beautiful faces <laughs> thank you your energy is amazing Thank you. <laughs> so I can attest to your um, just doing it. So I am trying to get my own little business going, very similar to what you're doing, this whole positivity and just doing it. And I did this five-day challenge and we had to show up, like literally. It was like, okay, you need to go live, you need to do this, you need to do that. And I'll tell you what, in one month, just the number of responses from people and it's so wonderful. So keep it up. <laughs> Yes, Elizabeth, isn't it so true? And a lot of times the things that we think is so hard when we just do it, we're like, wait a minute. I was waiting that long to just do this thing that's really not that hard because you just have to show up. Yep, and it keeps so, coming. Yeah, and it keeps coming. A, a quick, quick story. My nephew um, wants to start a food business with his um, one of his friends. And so I kept telling, giving him all the steps. This is what you do, this is what you do. And he finally went and did the paperwork online. And he was like, auntie, that was so easy. What was I waiting for? I said, you see, you just have to do it because the thing that you're so afraid of is really not that difficult. You just have to do it. There's all these things that we add to, the, to it and add fear into that just stops us dead in our tracks and it's not necessary. Insignificant thoughts. Cut the shit. Stop having them. <laughs> yeah. Thank you everybody for showing up. Thank you for kicking off our Tuesday in the best possible way.